Howdy, welcome to the shop, I'm Mike. Um, so today we're going to, uh, hopefully, if this works, right, we'll find out. Um, we're going to uh, try to make, and this is just a little piece of aluminum for a test before I do it in tool steel. Um, so uh, we, I'll zoom in just a hair maybe, you can see that. So what we've got here, this is a, a spot face cutter. Um, it's actually made to run uh, when it's going to be in, in use. It actually has to run counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, it's about an inch and a quarter, 32 millimeters or so around. Um, and it has this oblong slot in the back to drive it. And actually, it had been rounded over as it used when I had to grind it smooth and uh, flatten it out. But it's flat now, so no big deal. So this is. A, about a half an inch wide, maybe thousandths under, and roughly 835 thousandths uh, in this dimension. And this is this, this is a quarter inch radius, so half inch. They use the hack a half inch end mill to make this. So we want something that's going to go in there and drive it, because when this is going to go in, it's going to go on a shaft with the driver in there. The, then the driver is going to be have a pin that it can go on the shaft because this has got to go through a hole the driver the pin the driver this and then a pilot will screw on the other end of it to hold it all together so that I can use it this is going to be used to uh, increase the width inside the frame on the uh, motorcycle project so to make these radiuses I, and not too long ago so this thing here so this gadget here that's hanging on the end of the mill is a Volstro rotary milling head and uh, I actually this is a fairly recent acquisition I, I saw it on Instagram and it's like you know that looks really cool I don't know how often I'd actually use it goes my little pointer um, I didn't know how often I'd actually use it and I thought but I, I really want one um, and I, what I read is that the collets were kind of hard to get for, depending on what vintage the collets could be hard to get but it turns out that the, and this company's out of business now, I think they've been gone about 10 years, which is too bad. Um, but, you know, this is something that a CNC could do easy, but <laughs> not so much with a manual mill. Um, but anyway, uh, this actually takes E32 collets, well ER32s will work, and the R for retaining. Um, so they, they fit fine. Um, so the way this works is it can go 360 degrees in any, you know, uh, radially, or you know, in a circle. And then you've got a about three inches, you know, 75 millimeters or so of travel. So you can, you know, offset it, your radius, and then swing it around, and you should have the arcs that we want. So we're going to try this. This is the first actual job I've tried to use it on. Hence the scrap piece of aluminum in there to find out if it's going to work. Um, the way this drives is that it, it's hooked to the spindle in here, and there is a, you can't see it, but it's right here anyway, there's a spline shaft that runs the length of this, and then this, the bevel gear that drives this runs on that shaft, and then there's another gear in here that spins the shaft, so this can traverse back and forth and maintain the spindle rotation. Um, and it, it does not, I don't believe, change the direction of the spindle now it runs it runs the same as normal um, they recommend I think about 2,000 2,500 is the maximum RPM um, and oh, I better go down just a little and they also suggest um, using no bone more than a 3 8 in mill because I'm just giving up a huge amount of rigidity um, but got a stop that hits uh, the machine part on here and you can adjust it on your machine so that the angle because that sets the angle um, so you can uh, trim that in and for this I'm not going to worry about it too much I have not done that but I did check that zero is really zero so that's that's really cool um, so we're going to uh, you know use the edge finder find the center of this and uh, move over try to take our uh, side passes and then do the offset on the radius and try the end cuts. I don't know how well this is going to work. 
we're going to find out. So if that seems interesting, well, hang out for a few minutes and uh, hang out with me in the shop and let's just see what happens. So, uh, of course, you can't use the quill. The quill's locked. This is clamped to the quill. You know, it's, it's, it's not bad. I did it on, I, when the first time I, when I first got it, I did do a, a little test on a piece of scrap just to, just to drive it around. No, nothing actually useful. Um, so, uh, we're gonna, like I said, we'll use the edge finder that is yeah, roughly centered in the X. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So, comes with special wrenches. So he found this one on eBay. And it was used, but it was it looked barely used. It was, it was in excellent condition. So there's our zero. Which of this can you see? That's not too bad. Sorry about the heat. It is really cold today. It is January 12th, 2021. And uh, it's, I don't know, 7 degrees outside or something like that. Fahrenheit. It's cold. It's supposed to be really cold this weekend. This may get all the snow that some folks did. So, uh, we, we need to make this it's just under a half, a, a, a half inch end mill barely fit this. I need a little clearance. So we're going to make this like uh, 495. So, so we want 248, but we also need half of the end mill, which is 187. Okay, shop calculator. So we want point, we want 0.495 divided by 2, which is you know, 247, 248, whatever. That's fine. And half of the dimension of this, which is 187 so plus 0 0.1875. That's 435 from offset. Go over here to 435 on DRO, which I know you can't see. We'll touch off. We need to go about 200 thousandths deep. It doesn't really matter on our test piece. Obviously, the real one will. Um, and then we'll just traverse this side, move over, traverse the other. Then we'll try the interesting bit, which is the rotary milling, and see if we can't put those radiuses on there um, without just you know, in a fairly easy manner. So, uh, here we go. This will be uh, 1300 RPM or so. So if our math is right, that should be about 495 thousandths. It is 497, 498. So pretty close, a little tiny bit off, but not bad. Of course, a little flex in the cutter, we probably could run it over again and get it a little better. Okay, so that was the easy part. <laughs> now, assuming that I can get this figured out, if I've got it figured out right, which you may not have, but yeah, we'll find out. So, what we need to do is come back to center. I said, I don't know if this is going to work right or not. We'll find out. This is how, how I think it should work. There is a manual on this. It's not much good. Okay, so we're going to um, we're going to rotate the head 90 degrees counterclockwise, which is 270. So this is I know you can't see it. Uh, is that 270? 
Looks like it. Let me double. Uh, let me double check. Hang on. markings on this are kind of odd. There's long lines and then the numbers between them. So let me, yeah, zero is, okay, it is absolutely in the middle. So, we'll go over here to 270. And on this little dial here, um, it has marks for um, basically minutes. Every five minutes, I believe. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, so it has marks for every five minutes of arc. So there's zero on that, zero on here, and go to the center of our part, and this is the part where it may, may or may not go right. We'll find out, right? Okay, lock the table. So everything is on zero, the cutter is in the middle. We're 90 degrees offset. So now what we need to do which of course it's on the wrong side for me to see it, um, is we're going to offset this by that same 435 thousandths. And this too, um, and I know you can't see it, but on both sides of this is a linear scale um, by 50 thousandths marks. So 5100, 152, etc. And then on the uh, hand wheel, it's zero to fifty thousandths by one thousand. So it's not, you know, you're not going to get ten thousandths accuracy, but it's, it's probably pretty good for this. So we're going to offset this by four hundred. So there's our four hundred, ten, twenty, thirty, five. We'll lock the feed. So, and you know it looks right. So theoretically, the end mill is now even with the side of this, which it looks to be. So that's good. So the way this should work is we'll come up, we'll traverse 180 degrees with this, go back, drop down, do it again, do it again, and do the same thing on the other end. Uh, so. Right, we no, that's not quite right. So we do need to offset from the center so that our, our outside ends up in the right place. And according to my math, that is 167 thousands. People that might have one of these are looking at me going, You've got to move it, idiot. Yeah. Okay, there's our 167. So now if I did this right, no, that is not right. We got 167 plus the radius of that cutter. Because that just don't look right. So let's do 0 0.1875 plus 0 0.167. We need to offset this 354, 355. make this right. Make it a little tiny smaller, so let's go 350. Okay, now we got our 350 thousandths offset. So, if I have this right, we'll find out here in a second. I think this is right now. We'll, uh, we'll bring the table up, diverse 180 degrees, do that a couple times, offset it or 350 the other way, and do that, and we should have our little part. Let me bring you in a little closer so you can see this. I guess that's about as good as it's going to get. 
All right. Here we go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Everything good? I'm going to only go about 20 thousandths to start with just to see how we go.
power 270 there. That shows up in the camera. It's, cause it's pretty far away and zoom away. But anyway, we've got a nice radius there. So we're going to move our table down the other direction. Our 350 thou. Far. Right, 350. I'm going to lock this. size. Alright, I think that's in the shot. Um, given this, this is this is way too big, so I gotta figure out where I did the math wrong. But let me drop the table back down. Pardon my head. Thousand site offset it. Oh, we need half of that. So if we divide that by half, we have 180 offset. So 180.1805. So I, I, I offset twice as much as I needed to. So that's, all, that's okay. <laughs> In this case, that's fine. So instead of 350, we're going to go back down here to. 180. Four, which is as close as we can get. All right, I'm going to do this and then I'll bring you back. All right, let's drop the table and see if our part fits. This is pretty cool. Cheers. All right, I'll zoom in a little bit. And I don't think the lighting is cooperating very good on this. There's a window right there, and it's messing things up. But it is what we got. So. This should be about 835. Let's see what we got. This is a little big. I guess I didn't go quite enough. 865, or maybe this needs dialed in a little better. 855. Let's see if this guy will fit. The other one's a little bigger. These aren't very precise. Not. Not quite. It's about 10, 20 thousandths too big. All right, here's the other cutter I bought. 
which is a much bigger slot, and it drops right on. Oh, that's freaking cool! Okay, well, uh, you know, obviously I need to, I need to go ten thousandths less offset on this and do it, but overall it works. Let me take the part out and show you. That's really cool. <laughs> So yeah, here's our two cutters, and you can see the uh, this one's got quite a bit bigger slot in it, and, uh, but it just goes right in there really nice. Very little play, um, so that's nice. So I'm, I'm going to make another one of these out of 01 tool steel to drive this with. I'm not going to harden it, but it is going to be um, pretty pretty tough. So yeah, that almost it fits widthwise. It just a little too long, which makes sense. That's 835 and that's 855. So, still, I know I can make the steel one now without any problem. So, uh, hopefully, you found this interesting. It is uh, not, so I searched on YouTube. I didn't really see. I found one video of a guy making stuff. He didn't say anything. It's like, I, I hate videos like that. That's just a pet peeve. It's like, if you're going to show something, explain what you're doing. Anyway, um, that's about all. Have a great day. Again, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me, and uh, we'll see you next time. I've got uh, more parts for this to make, and <laughs> we're going to try, and I don't know if it's going to work, I'm going to try to set the motorcycle frame up here on its side, and we're going to try to line bore the uh, swing arm to use this cutter to uh, make it wider ought to be interesting. If it doesn't work, then I got to do it while it's, you know, strapped down. Um, but uh, I'm hoping with this off and no vice that I have, and I have, I definitely have enough height. It's whether I can get it straight and, and uh, clamp down sufficiently good. So uh, have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you later.